Okay, let's move on to making glass cabochons. Uh, a cabochon, by the way, for those of you that are not aware, is, is just really a stone with a flat back. Um, you can have a piece of turquoise that has a flat back, and we call it a piece of turquoise. It's really a cabochon when it's used in jewelry. Um, and my uh, cabochons are rounded at the top and have a flat back on them, and you'll see why when we uh, go through the video on how to make a cabochon. So I do hope you enjoy it, and uh, let's go to the studio. Okay, we're gonna get started in making our glass cabochons. I've already uh, pulled my stringers. I'm gonna be using the light turquoise, the orange, and the green, and I've already gone ahead and pulled my stringers that I'm gonna be working with. And I've got my cabochon mandrel ready to go. As you can see, the only difference is the disc on the end of the mandrel, and it does have the bead release on it already as well. So I'm going to put that into the flame and heat it up. And I want to get this red hot is what I want to get it. I'm going to turn up the flame just a little bit. And start heating that up. And I'm going to start with the base of the light, light turquoise. And because I just pulled that, uh, pulled that string or my, my glass of, oh, my rod of glass, excuse me, is, is warm already. So I didn't have to introduce it quite as slowly into the, the heat because we certainly don't want it to shatter. That's happened many of times to me. And yes, I've burned myself a few times as well. <laughs> So I am getting a gather of glass on the end of my rod, my turquoise rod. About the, not quite the size of the, of the uh, mandrel, but a nice size glob of glass as we say. And I'm going to drop that down in the middle of my mandrel, turn my hands a little bit, load just a little bit more on that, trying to keep it as centered as possible. And then I'm going to pull it off, heat it and pull it off. I'm going to try to reshape this a bit where it's a little more round. And I'm constantly turning my mandrel hand to keep the centrifugal force, centrifugal force keeping that glass on my mandrel the way I want it to. And I've just kind of settled it down here to try to get it to spread a little bit. Take another look at it. I've got enough glass, but it's not going to the outside edge. I am going to heat it a little bit more. Now I'm going to take my graphite paddle and I'm going to kind of give it a little squish to spread it out a little bit more. And let it settle one more time. Give myself a little boost here and uh, you won't be able to see this unfortunately but I'm just going to kind of squish the glass as I'm turning it to try to get it to the outside edge and keeping it also in the heat and what I'm trying to do is force just a little bit of glass around the outside edge of the mandrel so that it kind of locks on a little bit to that outside edge. look. I'll see how round we are. Not as round as I'd like it to be. I'm going to work it just a little bit more and round that out a little bit. A couple of different ways you can do this. Shaping it just with the marver this way or I could actually roll it on my marver once again and um, shape it using the side of the mandrel as my circle. But I think I've got it pretty good. I'm going to continue to heat the back of the mandrel because I want to make sure that the, um, the glass stays on there. And um, also throughout the process, you have to keep your uh, cabochon and or bead hot um, just because you don't want it to start and get too cool and start cracking. So let's go ahead and load a little bit of a few green dots around the outside edge. I know these colors look very close, but one is actually going to be turquoise when it gets a cooled down and the other is going to be green. So I'm just going to put some dots around this outside edge and this is just kind of eyeballing, spacing, and the size of the dots 
as much as possible. When you get to these ends, you sometimes have to either go a little bit wider or a little bit narrower. In this case, I'm going to go a little bit wider. But for our purposes, I think that'll work out just fine. I'm going to heat the back. Now I'm going to heat the dots that I just put on. And I'm going to heat them in a couple of different directions, just kind of straight on. And then I'm also going to heat the front because the glass will follow the heat. So I'm going to try to pull those into the center a little bit. And again, continuously moving the mandrel. Okay, and I'm going to let that settle while I move it. Centrifugal force again, kind of moving things around a little bit. Just trying to make it as even as possible. All right. And then I'm going to take some orange and put it over the green. Just because, just because, basically the same thing I just did. But I'm kind of, um, going halfway up the green dot and laying the orange dots. And to get a to get a dot even dots it's it's you know time and practice that takes to get even dots and my dots aren't always even but it's kind of a timing thing. Breath dot breath dot breath dot and uh, that sometimes will give you, once you have that kind of rhythm, you can get a much better even spacing of your dots or uh, amount of glass in each dot, because that's important too. It's not just the spacing, but the amount of glass that you have in each dot. That's important as well. So again, heating from the front, heating from the back. I'm gonna let it settle a little. Always turning. So we've got, I don't know if you can see that that well, we've got some dots on there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a set of green dots again, but now I'm going to go between those orange dots and lay them in there kind of halfway up once again. Trying to keep everything as even as possible. And then I'm going to start heating things up. And I'm just going to heat the surface, those dots again to, to spread them out and get them into the surface. I'm going to heat the base go back and forth a little bit. Keep everything nice and warm. And I'm I'm trying to again pull those dots a little bit into the center. And slowly but surely they're getting there. And let it settle. And again we have now some green dots. Hoping you can see that a little bit over the other dots. I'm going to go back in with the orange again. And put the orange dots over the green dots. And you can get pretty darn close to this flame. It is hot, but I can get, oh, within an inch or two. Okay, now those dots, I can tell I've got a couple that are a little bit bigger than the others. So I've got two choices. I can try to take some glass off of this bigger one, which I think is what I'm gonna do. And I'm just heating the tip of that dot and putting my uh, stringer in there and pulling up the glass. So that looks a little bit better. That looks a little bit better to me. And 
I'm going to heat the back because it's been a little bit. Heat the back, heat the front. That one looks a smidgen too big yet. And I'm going to look at it face on and I've got one that's a smidgen too big and one that's a little bit too small. So I'm going to I'm going to add a little bit of glass to a couple of them here. Just a smidgen. Heat this up. Melt those dots in there. Let it settle a little bit. See how I'm doing again. Too awful bad. Try to flatten it out just a little bit more. Get from the back. Okay, not too bad. Uh, well, you can see that, but looking fairly good. The colors, you can't see the colors very well, and that's just because they're. The, the orange is gray and or not as orange as it should be. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down my heat a little bit. Move a little bit of this out of my way. And I'm going to come in with a, I've got a little pointer. This is an old uh, mandrel. It's got a little point on it. And I'm going to pull these dots, these last dots, into the center of the bead. And that's how I form the flower in the center, center of the mandrels. Or excuse me, center of the cabochons. So I'm going to look straight on. I'm going to put it in the heat a bit, and then I'm going to give it a little tuck. A little more heat, and a little tuck into the center. And I'm going to go a couple over. I don't do each one just one by one. I kind of go every other one at first, pull it over, heat it up. Pull it in. And now I'm going to heat the whole thing again. I want to make sure everything stays stuck. And I'll go back. Heat it up. Pull it down. And I know you can't see what I'm doing very, very well, but I'll show you this in just a moment. Heat it, pull it down. What I'm doing is kind of creating those petals to the flower. Heat it up again. And it looks a little bit like a mess. At this point, it looks a little bit like a mess, but it'll be okay. This is where these handy graphite tweezers come in. And what I can do now is I can kind of pinch out the middle there grab a hold of it and pull some of that glass out and which will help also make the shape once again. Got to heat it up a little bit in there. Get in, pull a little. What I do is sort of make a couple of little handles first. Now I'm going to come, I've got my handles, I'm in the center that up a little bit more. I'm going to pull. And that's where your glass of water comes in handy. You want to have that glass of water close by. Go in here again, heat it up. Grab a hold. It doesn't come right away. You got to give it a little more heat. Don't have to do too much on a smaller piece like this, but I want to make sure I get that center correct and in the right place so everything looks fairly even. I'm a little off center right now. Go back in here. There we go. 
Okay. That looks fairly even. So now I'm going to heat that up, and I, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it this way to see if I'm fairly even, which it does look. But I'm also looking at it this way. So if that that little piece that's pulled out is going like this one, I'm going around, around and around. I know it's not even, but it looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do is get rid of the rest of it by taking my handle again, or my extra marver, heating up that center, making sure I'm as close to the center as possible, and giving it a little tuck in. I hope you can see a little bit of that. So now, there, I, I can either leave that hole, and if I'm doing a, a stone in stone, I would actually just leave that hole so I have a place to drill when I'm doing the stone in stone on the cabochon. Uh, but what I'm going to do is try to smooth things out just a little bit more. Heat everything up. Now I can also use my, once again, I could use my marver to it's a little high, maybe I went up out of the screen there, but I'm just flattening the top a little bit. Get it down. Heating the whole thing up. And uh, our last color was orange. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take, well, I think this one will work, turquoise. A little bit of turquoise, and I'm gonna put it out right in that, that center area. or as close to that center area as I can get it. Want a little more? Do it again. A little more glass on there. Heat that up. How'd I do? Not so well. I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to get a little closer. I'm going to go ahead and actually pull this off just like I did that other so I can get it a little closer to the center. I don't like where that ended up. poke again. And I'm trying to only heat the very tip of that little that little tidbit I have sticking out there. Heat the whole thing again. on the top. Get my turquoise ready. A little more heat. And try that one more time. And that looks a little bit better. It's a little bit bigger. But it's in the center, which is what I wanted. So we'll see the whole thing tomorrow when it comes out of the kiln. Now it's going to go into the kiln and anneal. Sit at 950 degrees for one hour, and then um, we'll cool it down slowly. And we'll see it tomorrow. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or anything, be happy to or go ahead and message, message me. Uh, be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, so here we are. Um, our cabochon from uh, the video is 
the smaller one that you see there in the yellow and turquoise there is a little bit of green in there as well um, the colors don't pop like i'd like them to uh, but it is a nice even cabochon uh, it looks even when you look at it straight on which is good uh, the other two cabochons i had done um, earlier i just wanted to show you those so you can see the pops of color that you can really get um, kind of pretty uh, colors on those. I really enjoy those. And, and you can see the different designs as well, how you can manipulate the designs with the dots and the pulling um, of the dots. So here are some pieces uh, that I have incorporated the cabochons with my sterling silver settings. So you can take a look at those as well. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And again, if I can help in any way, do let me know by messaging me. Uh, happy to answer any questions I can. Thanks so much. See you again soon.